Welcome back guys. Today I'm going to show you how to make an awesome control stand for your Xbox controller, PS3, PS5, PS12, whatever you got. It's going to be great. Let's get it going. Now of course the first thing you're going to need for this project is a controller. So take your controller. Me personally, I'm an Xbox fan. I guess you can call me an Xbox fanboy. That's fine. I don't care. It's what I got. So you're going to take your controller and you're going to get a piece of paper and a pencil and you got to draw up a basic shape of the stand that's going to hold the remote. Now what I discovered is you could take your hand and if you cup it under like that and you put your controller in there, you can see the basic shape is a V. So get yourself a piece of paper, draw yourself a design. As long as you got a nice V that can cradle controller, any shape that's like that, that's not hard. So get yourself a piece of paper, draw yourself a template, and then we can go from there. Now that you've got a basic shape drawn up for your controller, you need to cut it out and test fit it onto your controller and see you know, how it fits, how it looks. As long as your shape in here cradles the controller good, you can really do whatever design you want. It's just personal preference. But the main fit is gonna be where you cradle the controller. So let's cut it out. Now that you have your basic shape cut out, the design you like, uh, and you can always experiment with how you want it. You can take edges off, you can make different shapes, whatever you want to do, as long as the controller fits in the cradle. So take your controller, I usually use the high side for the back. I'll kind of set it down in there like that. You can get an idea about what it's going to look like in the front. Put it upside down in the back, look at it. You see the controller sitting up against the back of your template here and you say it's gonna work out good now that you have your paper template cut out you can do what I did and transfer that template over to a quarter inch sheet of plywood and cut it out with a jigsaw then that way you always have that template and if you wanted to replicate it you could do it easily and it's easier to work with the plywood stock than trying to trace a flimsy piece of paper so let's go ahead and get a template cut out I'll show you how that works and then you'll have one Now that you have your template design cut out, you can go ahead and take a piece of sandpaper, kind of smooth up the edges. Once you got the edges smoothed up, go ahead and test fit it on your controller. Mm, that's nice. There you go. Now as far as what the stand's gonna be made out of, I just go down to my local hardware store, the big blue one. Yeah, one by four, that's it. You get this, you can make several of them. You know, if you wanna give them away for friends, family, gifts, whatever, or you, you wanna sell them, you can do that too. So you're gonna need three pieces, one for each side of your template. So what you're gonna do, put it down at the end of the board, mark off a piece to cut. You wanna have some extra, I'll show you why later. You're gonna have three pieces, one for this leg, one for the next leg and then you're gonna need a piece for the base as well 
So I'm gonna go ahead and get these marked. We're gonna get them cut. We're gonna go from there. So now I've got my three pieces rough cut. I'm gonna set one off to the side for the base. We'll worry about that later. Now I'm gonna take the next two, I'm gonna run over to the table saw. I'm gonna square up the edges and clean up the cuts. And then we can get started on doing the shapes. Next, I'm going to take my template, I'm going to transfer it over to just one of the boards. You want to make sure you get this bottom flush with your template. That's so much easier doing it with a hard template versus using a flimsy piece of paper. Alright, now we got to cut our template out of our 1x4. And it could be easily achieved with a jigsaw. You just gotta take it slow and easy. You know, don't rush it. Let the saw do its thing. But I'm gonna use my bandsaw and it's gonna make it a lot easier. Now a tip for speeding this up and making it even faster is you have your template drawn on one. You take your other board, put it together, square up the bottom that you cut earlier. That's why I refined it on the table saw so it's got a nice flat edge and I can stack them up together. Get yourself some masking tape and you can tape the boards together. That's why I said leave that little extra bit of space so you can tape the two together and you can cut two boards at one time. Make sure that both templates are cut exactly the same. And like I said, you could do that with a jigsaw, but I'm gonna do it with a bandsaw. So let's go ahead and get started on that. So now you got your basic legs cut out. Saves time doing them two at a time. Now, even with the bandsaw, they're still not lined up perfect. You'd probably run into the problem with the jigsaw as well. You know, it's hard flexing that blade around some of these tight corners. You could round them out more if you wanted to, but I'm gonna take them to my spindle sander. I'm gonna double them up and I'm gonna refine the edges all at the same time to get them all nice and smooth and into the final shape that I want. What I'll do is line them up the best I can, particularly the bottom side. You want a good, nice reference point to start off of. So get the bottoms lined up. And then what I like to do is take a clamp and clamp them together. And now I can run them through the sander and get them smoothed out. If you guys are enjoying what you're seeing go ahead hit that thumbs up hit that subscribe button and that bell icon you don't have to but it honestly means the world to me and all your support is greatly appreciated back to working now that you have each arm cut for your controller stand assembly so you can start to get an idea of what it's gonna look like now where you go with mounting it to the base 
is entirely up to you. But what I did, I spaced it out three quarters of an inch. There's a three quarter inch gap in between both arms. And I'm gonna add a half inch wood dowel to connect the two arms. And I'm gonna show you how I did it with a drill press. First thing I did was clamp both my pieces together. Then I used a center punch to mark a hole about where I wanted my dowel pin to go. I then used that hole that I made with a center punch to line up a tiny drill bit. And I drilled a tiny hole all the way through both pieces. I then inserted my half inch Forstner bit and lined up the bit with the tiny hole that I had made to drill a hole all the way through. Well, I messed up, but it's okay. I can fix it, hopefully. I started off with a nice half inch hole and somewhere along the line, it became very wallered out. So, time to try something different. I'm sure it was operator error. Mistakes happen. It's all good. So we're going to try pumping up the hole and going up to a three-quarter inch dowel. Let's go ahead and do this again. Yeah, yeah. That is much better. So... No longer going to use the half inch. We're going three quarter now. But it's alright. I like things on the fly. Next I sanded each piece to 220 to get them nice and smooth. After sanding I took my palm router with a round over bit and rounded over the edges just to give it a smoother profile. And then I took some 220 sandpaper and smoothed up the edges even more. Next we need to cut our dowel rod that's going to connect the two legs together. I'm going to take my dowel rod and just get a rough estimate of about how long it needed to be going edge to edge. I can take this over to the bandsaw and get a piece cut out. Just smooth up the edges with some sandpaper. Beautiful. Now before we get to standing, we need to install our dowel pin into one of the legs. Just get it started in there nice and gentle. If you can't get it to go all the way, you can use a rubber mallet. But be very careful, light taps, because you can split the wood if you're not careful. And there you have it. If you have a little bit of a lip or something like that, you can always hit it with your orbital sander and smooth that out. I'm going to go do that real quick, and we'll continue the process. Now I have the dowel pin all flushed up with the side of the leg. Time to attach the other one. This can get a little tricky. You got to make sure that your bottoms are going to be lined up as you're driving it in. Same thing, you want to make sure the side is nice and flush. If you need to hit it with the sander, go ahead and hit it with the sander. And then you have your legs assembly done. For my finishing choice, I'm going to be using Minwax Jocko Bean. I'm going to apply it with a chip brush. And then after I let it sit for a little while, I'll use a blue rag to wipe off the excess. And it should look pretty, pretty sweet. Need to let that sit a little while and I'll wipe off the excess and see what she looks like. That color came out beautiful. Now while we let the legs dry we can go ahead and start working on the base of the stand. 
gonna take the piece over to the table saw. I'm gonna clean up both edges, get it nice and square, hit the edges with my router, put a nice round over on it, get it sanded smooth, and then we can apply a stain to it. I love that Jocko bean stain. Now you could let these dry for a couple hours as per the instructions by the can and you can come back and put a top coat on it. But I'm going to go ahead and let them sit overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and finish the top coat. And then after that dries we'll go ahead and get it attached to the base. Yeah. Now that the stain is dry I'm going to go ahead and attach the arms to the base. I'm going to do that by pre-drilling holes from the bottom, countersink, and attaching it with wood screws. Once it's together, I'll put three coats of wipe on poly and she'll be done. Got my holes pre drilled. I got my screws in ready to go. I'll apply some wood glue. Whoops. And the stand is now complete. Nice rustic look, came out nice. Cradles the controller perfectly. And it adds a nice touch to storing your controller.